All right, so we got 24 orders going out, totaling a little over $500 in sales. We also have two sales on Poshmark, so stick around to the end of the video to find out what's sold. We have these Massimo women's jeans, size 14, sold on a best offer of $14.35 plus shipping. And we had this men's legendary white tails flannel button up size extra large sold for $17.95 plus shipping. This was an item that I just listed about a month ago. All right, so thankfully people are still ordering shorts. This is a pair of uh, Gap shorts, cargo shorts. Um, pretty new SKU, so I had listed it uh, probably a month or so ago and I took a best offer of $10 plus shipping. I find Gap shorts all the time, so which is why I took a best offer of $10. I usually list these between $17 and $20, depending on if they're camouflage and the size. So happy to get these items out of here. And another item I find all the time out there are Wrangler button-ups and Wrangler pearl snaps. This is just a regular Wrangler button-up shirt. The model is Riata. It's a 2X tall for men, and the SKU is 16378, so that means I listed it about two, three months ago, and it sold on a best offer of $14.35 plus shipping. All right, so I've been listing a lot more hats lately. Some are used, some are new. Um, this is a North Face used hat. It has some damage here on the brim. Um, but yeah, anyways, I sold this for $5 plus $6.95 shipping. I'm not a hat seller, nor do I intend to be a big hat seller going forward. So really just wanted to get this item out of here. $5 plus shipping. I'm happy with that. Another brand I've been letting go more and more lately is Nike. This is just a pair of Nike men's joggers, size medium. I took a best offer this morning of $8 plus shipping, and I just listed them last week. I'm okay with that as well because Nike I find out there anytime. So Nike men's joggers, $8 plus $8.95 shipping. I want to talk a little bit about why I think eBay is changing and how it can be beneficial to us going forward. I looked at my traffic tab recently, and actually I'll just show you guys right now. Um, I'll adjust some of the settings here, but um, this is why I think the future looks bright when selling on eBay. You know, I'm looking at my impressions tab and my traffic tab under the performance page, and we're up 14.7% in impressions. We are up not very much on organic impressions, but that's okay. So if you see here yesterday, uh, we had a pretty good boost in impressions. What was it? Uh, almost 800,000 impressions here on eBay when I usually average between five and 700,000 per day. And you see the page views right there? Um, well, sorry, um, 1,900 page views and sold 25 items. We also sold two more on Poshmark. So as you know, we are only listing 25 a day. So yesterday, my entire inventory shrunk by two items. So that's why I think the future looks bright is because I've been focusing on high sell-through rate items lately, only picking up items with a good sell-through rate, meaning like 30% and higher for me and my business model. That's what I consider good because I want my item to sell within a year. So going off of a 90-day sell-through rate, 30% sell-through rate and above would hopefully get that item out of this inventory system within a year. So going back to focusing on high sell-through rate items, I've been seeing a little bit more traction in my store. Not too much. Not like, you know, back in uh, February and March when sales were, were really popping off. I'm just seeing now my store react. I have not seen any difference between listing 50 a day or 25 a day in my sales. Like my sales are remaining the same. I'm selling about the same amount of items a day, except my average sale price went from like $24.50 to now $26 average sale price. So now I've been able to increase my bottom line by $1.50. Also, keep in mind my cost of goods is going up. So 
while that's going to take some time to kind of marinate and settle in, I would hope to get my average sale price to upwards of $28, $29, $30 average sale price. Hopefully by the start of next year, I'm hopeful. Um, so I, that's the changes that I've seen. And of course, I want to document all of the progress and the things that I'm picking up so I can really show you guys how my store is reacting. I want to reach out to you all. Are you noticing anything different on your end as far as eBay impressions, um, your sales, or are you doing anything in your business to kind of combat all these changes going on on eBay? I know I am. I'm going to be persistent and proactive. Love this brand. The brand is Smart Wool. Um, this is a pair of base layer purple leggings for women, size medium, um, merino wool. And these didn't sell for as much as I had hoped. I took a best offer this morning of also $15 plus shipping, where generally these can go for much higher. But you know what? I'm ready to start taking profits on inventory. Smart Wool is a really good brand. So $15 plus $7 shipping. This brand is making a comeback. Uh, the brand is Juicy Couture. This is a vintage pair of Juicy Couture women's shorts sold really fast i think i listed these less than a month ago and sold on a coupon of 15.96 plus 6.95 shipping this is a women's dan skin active jacket that was listed let's see about six months ago sold for 17.95 plus shipping so getting going in your reselling business can be tricky can be a little bit difficult especially with all the information out there which is why marcus dixon and i have started a reseller mentorship with over 60 members growing their stores we are here to provide you guys with over 10 hours of weekly coaching what's included in that is a reseller spreadsheet a bolo brand list a do not list list meaning like the vero list as well as hundreds of hours of pre-recorded replays to help you guys kind of gain some traction in your reselling business. Marcus does the morning call, I do the evening call, and we have just added another coach to the program, Reseller Tom. I'll post his channel around here, and you guys can check him out as he does mainly clothing-focused coaching calls where we deep dive brands, we talk about brands, sell-through rates, average sale price, and how to get good at ident identifying brands that are actually in demand. So you can check it out, link down below, or you can scan this QR code right here. And we have a seven day free trial, so you can just check it out at no cost to you and see how, what's all the fuss about. Like, what is it all about? We just added another coaching call that I do on Thursdays about the Amazon Influencer Program. And I did that because I just had a lot of other people reaching out curious about the program so our whole goal and long-term vision is to add more and more coaching calls based around the reselling niche to help you guys make some money you know get some traction in your business whether you want to do it part-time or full-time we are here to help you go further faster we'd love to see you there here's kind of the status update of my consolidation so far we've freed up two full racks about now two and a half full racks. That's why you see all these boxes hanging out everywhere because I'm kind of taking my time. You know, if I were to do this all by myself in one day, it would take me a full eight, 10 hours and I would be dead. My body would be broken and I would be feeling pretty sore the next day. So I'm taking my time. I'm doing one rack a day and I'm slowly making my way around the inventory. But this is kind of the cool part of this inventory system. You get to consolidate your items and free up more space. So like I've said in the past, I can hold about 500 items per rack. So this is the nice part. I don't need to be worrying about buying more boxes or buying more racks for quite some time. And I wanna say, if you guys are thinking about getting into this inventory system, you could check out link down below. Uh, you can get the poly bags, you can get the boxes that I use, which is 8 by 8 by 32 fits perfect on these racks that are 24 by 48 by 72 uh, inches tall, and they work perfect. Look, a little overhang, but not much. Like, that's not going to kill the deal. So, like I said, find it linked down below. I want to say thank you for the people who are using the links down below. It really helps support the channel. Appreciate you. This is an oversized women's vest by the brand Wild Pearl, sold for $9.95 plus $8.95 shipping. The SKU is over a year old. 
So really nice to see some of these older items still selling without the markdown sale. So I just want to take a second to answer some of your guys' questions. And if you want your question answered, just drop a question down in the comment section down below and we'll feature it in an upcoming video. But this is a great question. Um, it's Vintage Time by, uh, it's Vintage Time 7148. Um, great videos. I'm learning lots. Thank you. Appreciate that. Um, so they're asking, just wondering if you'd share where you get your online arbitrage. Nike shoes for $19.95 is a crazy good price. I never thought of buying items online to sell in my store. Yeah, you know, there is multiple ways to source, right? But it was really appealing to do some online arbitrage. So I really take advantage of the Kohl's Markdown events, Marshalls, uh, TJ Maxx, and Ross. So you can do it online or in store. I like online because you could sh get it sh all those items shipped to your house. Um, it's new to me as well. Like I'm not any, you know, I'm not a master of online arbitrage or retail arbitrage. I just know that when I buy these items, I want to focus on really checking the sell through rate and the average sale price. Because if I'm going to be paying up for items like these, this is what I got at Ross, um, some Juicy Couture shoes. Um, I think I paid $9 um, each, and they go for you know, $40, $50. Um, so you really gotta make sure that, since the margins are a little slimmer, you gotta make sure that is me spending $20 on a pair of Nike shoes to only make $5 profit, is that worth it? You gotta ask yourself that question. So I'm looking to, um, you know, buy something for $30 and I would at least want it to sell for $60 plus shipping. If I'm buying something for $50, I want it to sell for $100 plus shipping. So when I do those online arbitrage and retail arbitrage, I'm looking to at least double the average sale or double the price in which I pay. So I can have a little bit of a cushion and wiggle room if I do get any offers, if that makes any sense. But it's a great way to add in some newer items into your inventory. If you sell pre-owned clothing, it's a great way to bring in some newer items into your store to kind of prepare for quarter four, which is kind of what people are usually buying, newer shoes, newer items. So you know, you can really do well with online arbitrage. There are people who just only do that and they crush it. But I found that it really needs to be, um, you know, up to you and your business model because it can be a race to the bottom. You know, if it if it's on sale at Ross and everyone knows about it, then everyone's going to go and buy that item. So that's why I'm still mixing it in. I'm really going to focus on listing uh, a lot of the items that I have that are new with tags like socks and underwear before I go out and buy any more newer items. Otherwise, it's bad management. So I just don't feel good buying more and more stuff when I have all of these socks and underwear listed. Like, check this out. I just found more underwear. It's crazy. I, I really don't, where, like, where was this? Did someone come in here and put this in, in my shop? I, I don't know. It's, there's more. It's like, in, I don't, <laughs> it's easy to list, praise God, but, um, you know, I just, I got to get this listed, guys, before I go out and do any more sourcing. So, um, great way to make some extra money doing some online arbitrage. It's up to you. It's not for everyone. All right, y'all, don't laugh. This is a pair of Maurice's women's jeans, size 8. Normal kind of size, sold for $17.95 plus shipping and sold within about two to three months. This is a women's extra small vintage Hollister shirt. So I took a best offer of $5 plus shipping. This is not a brand that I would be picking up anymore. I've been really thankful for a lot of these sock sales. I just had a bundle order of a lot of three Nordstrom socks and also a three pack of Nordstrom socks as well. Those were a combined order of $24 plus $6.95 shipping. I think that is borderline around a pound, so I'll have to make sure that I can ship it ground advantage. 
but really seeing more and more underwear sales, more and more sock sales. And as you know, this is the season for gifting socks in underwear. Um, this is my time to get these items listed. Otherwise, if I wait until January and February, it's just not a lot of traction in those categories, you know, as much as there is in quarter four. So I need to be diligent and get these items listed or I'm gonna be missing out on potential profits. All right, so I'm selling at least one or two jackets per day off of these racks over the last week. It's been really nice and refreshing as I had basically no more room at all for these jackets. Jeez, oh, well, that broke. That's how many jackets I had in here. It is so tight between these jackets. I can barely even fit my hand through. So let's see, without tipping over the rack. This is a Billabong Sherpa line jacket. Uh, let's see what it sold for. We had it sell for $10 plus $8.95 shipping. So nice. Billabong is an okay brand, but anything Sherpa lined and you know, it's a nice flannel jacket. I'm usually gonna be picking it up if it falls within my price point. This is a J. Crew women's medium sweatshirt sold for $8.95 plus shipping. I listed this item about four months ago. Let me double check the price. No, it sold for $11.05 plus $8.95 shipping. Okay, I read it wrong. But yeah, selling so many more sweaters, so many more jackets. I hope you guys are getting those items listed. Wanted to get into another question by Josh Galt. If you guys don't know who Josh Galt is, go check out his channel. I'll put it up here somewhere. He does some really good deep dives into some of the theories as to what may be going on on eBay. So good stuff, Josh. Um, you said you're listing six days a week or so, sometimes seven days a week. And the days of working 18 hours a day listing items are done for now. I'm not convinced that it produces a better result versus the amount of sacrifice, amount of sacrifice required to work long days like that. Yeah, you know, um, the days of like list it and forget it are gone, and maybe the days of consistent listing could be coming to an end. I don't know. I'm not going to be doing it. I'm still going to be listing consistently, but I've been hearing more and more people talk about, hey, you know, I list every other day. And I have great results. So I think you're seeing more and more of a shift towards those higher sell through rate items. And maybe it's a thing to come, you know? And I just really resonate with a lot of those people because, yes, the reselling is not easy. Like, if you ever thought it was easy, like, you, <laughs> you see the mountain of clothes behind me, like, like physically, I guess it's easy. It's better than digging trenches, right? But, like, it's mentally demanding, it's physically demanding, it's, uh, you know, it's, it's demanding in all areas, right? Like you're the accountant, you are the customer service, you are the sourcer, you are the photographer, you're like eight or nine different hats, depending on what you're selling. So it's not easy. And some of those days I can recall back last winter when I was out in this warehouse like eight hours a day working in like 42 degree weather freezing and just going like man is this something that I really want to be doing like going forward working these eight to 12 hour days doing eBay and you know now fast forward a year later it's uh you know I've cut my listing goal in half and you know I'm working three four hours a day and that's really a beautiful place to be but I feel you on that Josh it is a grind and it can be you know over the time it can be kind of like crushing to your spirit because especially when eBay has a lot of the control on the back end you know and you're putting in so much work for peanuts and it's like yay I made seven dollars today so it's like I, I think just still continuing on with your vision though is just as important because it's going to allow you to survive some of these seasonal changes that happen on eBay so quarter four is going to be a great determining factor as to is it going to be a big flop on eBay or are we going to see the numbers that we've been seeing for the last few quarters especially in quarter four we had this women's REI three-quarter sleeve shirt, just a plain shirt with a nice little graphic on front. Man, this sold pretty quick too. I'm seeing a lot of fast sales. Um, I think I listed this a month ago. Thanks, Lisa. 
So uh, whoever that is, but <laughs> they left that in the note. Uh, sold for fourteen thirty-five plus six ninety-five shipping. REI Co-op is a pretty decent brand. I usually pick it up uh, if it falls within my cost of goods for the year. All right, another item that was just listed eighteen two hundred, probably listed about six to eight weeks ago. This is a Hurley men's hoodie, extra large. It is Sherpa lined as well. Sold for twelve dollars plus eight ninety five shipping. Let's see if I'm able to fit this in a legal flat rate envelope. Should we try it? All right, so legal flat rate envelope. I use this to ship out a lot of my jackets, a lot of my bigger sweaters. It's a great one that I use quite often. This ships for seven ninety on eBay, and now we're gonna see if we could fit this huge old sweater in here. And I am always determined to the fullest to get these items to fit in here. I don't care. So let's make it work. So first of all, got to warm up your hands. Now you don't really need to do that, but you really just got to focus on, you know, getting it in there, but taking your time, being patient with it, you know? So... You kind of squeeze both ends. See, now we got it kind of going in. And now we're going to apply a lot of pressure to squeeze this in here. We want to make sure that we go nice and slow. And once we fit it in there, see, we got it pretty nice. But still, we're not going to ship it out like this, right? I don't think so. So we want to be able to apply tons of pressure to get this to seal. Because you can see here, that ain't working, right? So, you do the method of the tuck and roll method. I know you can't see my face, but whatever. Um, so, I like to tuck this thing in as hard as I can. And then once I get it to this point, I then like to roll it. And as long as that adhesive strip can roll onto the, um, the back side of the envelope, I kind of do this, like rock it back and forth. And then if it's a really kind of stuffed package, I'll just let it sit there while I get a piece of tape. Sometimes you'll need several. And then I'll rock this back. You can see it's sealed there, nice. But we're gonna add in some insurance. We wanna put this tape here over that seam. And then we got it. See, just like that. So 790, this ships. And you just want to make sure that it's not, you know, cracking anywhere, but that's how it goes. And see, you never know what you could fit in these envelopes. Um, I'm pretty sure you can fit up to 75 pounds in this envelope. These are some men's cargo shorts by the brand George. These came from a buyout I did last year where I bought out a fire relief center clothing, their donations that they got for, for clothing uh, over the last few years for fire victims. They were really ready to take all of those clothing items to a rag house and have them be processed. And I said, hold up, I will buy it all. And it took me about a year to sort through it all. And in that was these George shorts. They are size 42 and they are cargo. They sold for 1436 plus 895 shipping. Here's a brand I always pick up no matter what. It is the brand Chico's. These are a pair of Chico's women's jeans, size 2.5, which would usually be around size 14 to 16. Don't quote me on that. Um, but sold pretty fast too, within a couple months. Uh, took a best offer of $15 plus $8.95 shipping. All right, so these socks are by the brand Happy Socks. I have a ton of them that have yet to be listed. Um, this is a three pack of Happy Socks, uh, sold for $17.95 plus shipping. I found it's best to lot up the socks in pairs of two or three and put a price, you know, depending on the brand, but, you know, for plain Jane, like Nordstrom Gap socks, I'm pricing between $17.95 and $19.95, depending on material. So happy, I'm happy to get these Happy Socks out of the warehouse and onto a new life. Okay, I probably could have gotten a little bit more money for this hoodie. It is a Florida, Florida, Florida Gators full zip sweater for men. Sorry, it's large, sold for $17.95 plus $8.95 shipping. And if you don't know, 
Football season is in fact, so you're seeing a lot more NCAA and NFL items sell through my store. Um, I probably would have priced this at $27.95, but it was basically my mistake for uh, pricing it a little lower. But hey, it's gone. On to the next. And this is a men's Hard Rock Cafe button-up shirt, size extra large, sold on a best offer of $15 plus $6.95 shipping. Just wanted to show you guys the Poshmark sales for the month. We've sold 42 items for $617 in gross sales. It's starting to become a little bit more consistently as of the 9th. Um, a little more consistent as of the 9th. So really awesome to see. I'm having my cross lister do all of the cross posting using Vendu. If you guys want to check out Vendu, I have a link down below. You get 25% off. You can check it out. But yeah, really nice to see an extra, you know, $617 in sales added to my reselling business. I hope we can reach $1,000 in gross sales for the month. I know it's not a lot, but a little bit does add to the bottom line in getting these items cross-listed. We had one last sale come on eBay. This was a men's Vans long sleeve shirt, sold for $14 plus $6.95 shipping. All right, so now I wanna go over the few sales that came on Poshmark over the last 24 hours. It was only two, but still, that's okay. Um, this is an Ann Taylor women's skirt, sold for $10 plus shipping. It's a size two. And then we had this Fox Racing women's sweatshirt, size medium, sold for $18 plus shipping. So if you guys are interested in figuring out what types of brands that I'm picking up and looking out for on a daily and a weekly basis, you can check out the free ebook down below where it goes over my top 50 Bolo brands. Or if you want a summarized version, you could check out this video right here where it goes over my top 10 brands within that Bolo brand list. And the whole reason why I do that is to help you guys for the next time you go out sourcing. Maybe you can come across some of those items as well. If you have any questions, drop them down below and we'll catch you in the next one. God bless.